Hi everyone, welcome to the first day applicant day at Oxford Books University. I'm Catherine, the Chancellor of the University, and I'm joined here by two of our student ambassadors, Daisy and Joe. Welcome. Uh, you're both in your fourth year at Oxford Brooks. So can you even remember, I want to take you back to the beginning, before you even came here, about when you were applying, what were you thinking, why, why did you end up coming here? What was the, what was, how did you get here? Fun, well, firstly, I started with foundation year. Um, what does I'm, that mean? So it's a one year degree, a foundation degree. Um, and usually a lot of people use it then to step on to another degree. I think you can then go and do apprenticeships. Um, but I didn't know what I wanted to do, so and, and wasn't even planning on coming to uni. I was going to take a break, um, but I saw a foundation at Oxford Brooks, um, and I thought it looks really appealing. It was a life science foundation, um, so it is maths, chemistry, and biology. Um, I thought it'd be great. So I kind of did the unconventional thing. I didn't come to an open day. Um, I rang Oxford Brooks up. Luckily, had a chat, um, and luckily. They thought it'd be great, so I came and joined the foundation year. Um, so it was a very sort of one moment I wasn't going to university, next moment I was, um, and I think doing my foundation year was probably the best thing I've ever done. Like, it's kind of because of well, I wouldn't be sat here, I don't think. So I wouldn't even be on my medical science degree now. Um, but if I hadn't done that, I don't, I don't even know where I'd be. I don't, I don't know. Like, it's allowed me to do so much. Like even doing everything I do at Oxford Brooks, like student ambassador, everything else has, has kind of come from... Changed life! Yeah, so it's good. For the better? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> just checking, just checking. Joe? Uh, like Daisy, I did a foundation year as well, but um, I was slightly more conventional. I applied through UCAS and such. I went to an open day. My parents took that as an opportunity to come visit my brother. And uh, I came around, had a look around the campus, fell in love with it, uh, fell in love with the lecturers and stuff. And the relationship they started to develop on that day was all about me. They were invested in what I wanted to do with the degree. Um, I did get the grades to get onto the course, but I was offered the foundation year um, as a bit of a stepping stone uh, to get used to university standards and university life. It was an extra year at the university I wanted to go to to end up on the course I wanted to go to. It sounded perfect for me, another year at university. And that put me then in good stead for when it came to my undergraduate degree. Uh, I'd already knew how to reference, I knew how to present, and I was actually helping other people out on that year as well. So, yeah, um, yeah slightly more and, and did both of you have an idea what university would be like before you got here? Um, for me, I wanted to get stuck in and meet new friends, and straight away I was thinking uh, a bit of the social side, mainly, and then um, the academic side. I chose a subject, I'm now studying philosophy, that I'd done at school and I enjoyed. So I thought, well, if I enjoyed it at A-level, I'll enjoy it at degree level, and then I wanted to experience the university life as well. And was it what you expected or was it completely different or did you not know? I think the freedom to do be yourself and do what you want um, was completely different. I didn't really enjoy the whole school process. Like I love school, don't get me wrong, but the whole sort of regime of going, you have to go to class, that's it, go home. Like whereas university, you kind of free to do what you want, you go to your lectures, but again, it's very like, you, you choose if you want to learn, like, if you want to get ahead that's on you, so where you have no lecturers sort of chasing you and getting you to do your work. So I think that was, for me, like the biggest sort of, wow, this is, I'm in control sort of thing. Freedom. Yeah. yeah. The assignments have been a great thing for me because I don't perform well in exams. Mm -hmm. I don't really like exams and the fact that I've been able to do longer essays, I've been able to do group presentations, which has really suited my style as opposed to being in an exam, which at school was the predominant way of assessing. So that's been another thing I've really loved. And then university life itself, I mean, do you, obviously you remember because it's, it's quite recent, but where did you live when you first came? Has it changed in the years you've been here? Um, I lived up at Westminster Halls at Harcourt Hill Campus in my foundation year, and then I spent two years in private housing because I thought part of being a student was to get a student house. And then this year I've moved back into Westminster Halls on Harcourt Hill as well, so I've kind of gone full circle. Oh, old times. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and what, what, what's the difference? Why, why so, the...? Um, I enjoyed the houses I lived in with my friends, but my friends graduated. And then uh, my girlfriend had done a placement year and we've got a studio flat up there. So there is places for couples, which we found great. And because we're both in our final year, there's enough stress going on with dissertations and assignments and stuff. Having to deal with a private house with letting agents and electric companies, water companies, was just one step too far. Whereas now we've got all the bills and everything included. So that's made my life a little bit easier this year. Nice. What about your living Hi. experiences? Well, I've, I think I've done everything as well, but I've commuted. So my first foundation year, I 
drove in every day. That was... So you lived at home? Yeah, I lived at home. It was interesting because having to get up to avoid the traffic in the morning yeah. to get to a 9am. Yeah. Um, and we were at the Abingdon, um, the Abingdon and Whitney College. So we were based there as well as here. But trying to get through the traffic at that time was a challenge. Um, I stuck with it. But then I think by the end of the foundation year, I thought, if I'm going to do this, I want the full experience, move away from home. I lived at Cheney Student Village, um, so it was ideal to five minute walk from campus. Um, it was great. I think some of my best friends now are still that, who they are met through the flat. Yeah. Um, and then we all decided to move to a house together in second year or third year, whatever we call it. Um, and then after that, I'm now a warden at Crescent Hall. So, oh, responsibility! Yeah, I've gone kind of full circle, and yes. now I look after You're in the charge. people that were in my position a couple of years ago. So, so you've seen it from both sides yeah. now as well. <laughs> So I feel like I make quite a good warning because I've had that experience as well. Yeah. Um, hopefully I'm the nice warden, which is quite good, so. I'm sure you are, <laughs> I see. And would it, because it's sort of that whole experience of, of when you come and when you learn and you study and then obviously the, the sort of where you live and things. I mean, is that the kind of things... I know you didn't come to Applicant Day, but if, if students are coming to Applicant Day or potential students, are, you know, what are they, what's the best things to do? Are they asking about these things? Are they think thinking about or? The best thing I can say is to go and speak to the lecturers because as nice as it is for people like me and Daisy and the other ambassadors to speak to you and tell you about our experiences, we're not going to be the ones teaching you mm -hmm. for three years or however long you're here. So going to find out about them, that's what clinched it for me um, with Brooks is the lecturers and the, the environment they started to give. And um, I could sense from those sessions that there was a lot of support, which I thought was great. Um, but there's loads of icebreaker sessions going on today as well, which is really fun. Um, so where you can meet your maybe future course mates, which is a nice, nice idea. Because it always feels a bit, you know, when you come to these days and you don't know people, yeah. and you don't know if you're going to be here, and it's always... A little bit awkward. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It can be quite intimidating. Yeah. And is it just sort of the, look, yeah. everyone's feeling that way, get stuck in. Yeah, so I've been up in the icebreaker sessions this morning, and it has been literally, right, uh, we've been playing Two Truths and One Lie. We've been playing little games just so you get to know each other. And yeah. We've not really been talking about the courses. We've been finding out about each other and getting to know people, which I think is a massive part yeah. of university that no one really talks about. And when, when, when that, not, not that I'm, you know, it's over yet. You've got still a few more weeks to be here. If you reflect back now, what, what is it that you will take away and think that's what makes Brooks special? For me, I think it's getting involved with everything I've done. So, I mean, I might be an extreme end of the spectrum, so some people get involved a little bit. I've kind of really launched myself in, so one of my biggest things was joining in with Student Union. Um, so I did the safety bus. I still do it. I've done it for three years. What now? What is the safety bus? Um, it's great. So it's like a, it's a bright orange minibus. Um, we went from 9 to 3. Um, a night. Um, it's all student-led volunteers. So 9pm to 3am? Yeah. Lovely. Um, and we are there to pick up students who may need a lift home, they're feeling unsafe. Um, maybe it's they've missed the last bus or it's too dark to walk home from the library, um, wherever they are within sort of the parameter of the Ring Road of Oxford. Um, sometimes we pick them up from the clubs if they can't get a taxi. Um, it's just an option for students to get home safely. So they can call it? They can yeah, call us. I've used um, it coming out of the yeah. cinema at midnight. Really? I just thought, I'm not paying for a taxi to get all my yeah, safety bus. Yeah, it's a one-pound donation. Yeah. So it's, it's a really, for me, that's been like a massive part of my thing. And that's run by students, for students? Um, and for me, that sticks out. Little things like that that Brooks do, I think it just adds our experience. Like a lot of my friends at RBBS just don't have a safety bus. Yeah. And everyone's like, oh, I can hear about the safety bus. Like, I think everyone that knows me knows the safety bus. I think I just kind of compared with it now, I think. So it's good. And what's the what's the feel of it? What's the feel of the university? If you can try and sum it up, vibrant. I say our campus feels for me. I don't know about you, but when I step onto campus, there's not really a day where I don't see anyone I know. Not even if they're just friends, but just people around. You get to get to recognise people. Like, Hi, how are you? Um, it's a very sort of family kind of feel on campus. Yeah, I totally echo that, and I think that extends not just from walking around campus and seeing your friends, but also within classrooms or lectures and also then in further support. I think uh, a lot of people might think that university is very daunting and at mm. times it can be, um, but certainly at Brooks there's an environment of support where if you need it it's or you want some help or you need someone to talk to, it's always there, whether it be a, a friend, an academic advisor or the wellbeing staff. I think that's one of my favourite things about the university as well. And obviously, I mean, for young people generally, not just at university, but the, the wellbeing side is much more talked about, there's much more awareness of the health and sport that needs to be in place. 
What what sort of have you seen in the time you've been here? Um, so the types of things, I I think like I've just said, it's a massively great service, and I think very underrated. It goes under the radar a little bit, and I always and say to people when I do a campus tour or something, I always say find out where the wellbeing services is, I point, point it out and I say it's always better to know where these things are because if you come to university, you're moving away from friends and family, um, there's a lot of things that can stress you out, make you feel a bit anxious. Um, knowing where to go to talk about these things is absolutely key and it's better to know where these things are and not need them than to need them and not know where they are. Um, so I've had friends at other universities who've been struggling and not known where to go, whereas here, it extends into my lecturers where the lecturers will ask if anyone has any issues and it just fosters that environment of if anyone is struggling with this that and the other they have someone there that they can go and talk to um, which i think is massively needed especially in today's day and age mm. what are you gonna miss when you leave everything i don't want to leave <laughs> <laughs> that's a good sign you don't have to there's more degrees you could do Stay forever um i think all my friends of course and just January the campus, like it's nice to get up every morning and come in and just have such a friendly place. Um, I'll miss obviously my degree, like studying, but for me it's just again like I do sports at Brooks, so that's a great part of my enjoyment. It's just things like that, like things you can't necessarily get as easily when you're outside of uni. Like obviously you can go enjoy like extra clubs and sports, but it's all so accessible on campus and having that like right at your fingertips is I think I'll miss a lot. It's that security of, of having yeah. it all around me. Yeah. Uh, one thing I, I'm going to miss is like the opportunity opportunities the university's provided. So in the role as an ambassador, with wanting to go on to become a teacher, I've been able to go into classrooms and do a bit of teaching and get some experience in that side of things. I'm able to do things like this. I'm able to then, through my course, I've gone into other classrooms and those types of experience as well that are um, extracurricular and a, a bit of helping me find out what I want to do in my future is great and now I have to actually live that future which is a bit scary. So. <laughs> you have to step into the real yeah, world. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> How does the, um, what does the role of the student ambassador mean for you both? Um, I think it's a really good form of employment when at uni so a lot of people I think find balance in studies with work really mm -hmm. quite hard and obviously not everyone cannot have a job at uni where it just depends on the student but for me I needed a job when I came to uni um, and the ambassador job it's very flexible so you just sign up for shifts when you want there are certain shifts that you are expected to do um, but generally it's really flexible um, it's good money and again it's just I've learned I think so much about the campus so just all those extra little bits of information you get from the job and the skills like you said going to schools and um, meeting like campus tours I mean doing things like this right now it's just yeah. all of that is like this is completely like, different to doing campus. a campus tour which is completely different to yeah. going and doing yeah. a UCAS fair which is different from Daisy doing social media today and it's those types of things that you wouldn't normally get to do work in any other kind of job which is great. So you're just picking up lots of different skills all the time exactly. in different areas. Yeah. Exactly. And are you excited about the next steps? Yeah, yeah I think very much so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Um, like I say, scary, but I think Brooks has given me that platform to then go on and achieve what I want to do uh, with the backing of the foundation year. Um, that put me in good stead to then do my undergraduate and then from my undergraduate I feel I'm ready for that next step, which is good. Do you feel very different people than when you started four years ago? Yeah, really different. I'm so much more confident. Like, I don't think I'd be sat here doing this. Um, like my skill base is just, I feel like I could now go to a job interview, for example, and be able to sit there and actually have things to talk about. Whereas before I'd be like, mm, I did an A-level, this and that, but now I'm like, I do this, 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 I've done this. Um, yeah, and if, I feel like the enthusiasm comes out when I talk about my experience with Brooks. I just kind of light up and I'm like, yeah, this is great. So yeah, I'm, I feel it's prepared me a lot as well yeah. for things. So. I'm trying to think, I'm, I'm still as loud as I was when I first came. Well, that's, that's not changed. Yeah, that's, um, that's good. Yeah. That's good. But yeah, again, similar to what Daisy said, it, there's an environment that fosters this kind of confidence to go and, no, actually, this is something that I'm really proud of that I've done. I can take this further or I can take this on to the next step, which I think this environment has helped create. Yeah. Because I definitely did. When I, when I sort of went to university, and I, I wasn't completely clear on what I would do beyond it. I wasn't even sure what I was definitely going to study and it was that I don't I don't have my whole future mapped out and you always meet people who seem to like know everything they're going to do from like yeah. day one to the last day of their life and and I think what's wonderful at university is you can come even if you've come with a, a sort of plan in mind or you come with no plan at all 
you will change and learn so much in those years you were there. So either it will develop and influence you as a person and your decisions, but it will also give you opportunities you would never have known kind of before you went to university in the first place. Um, can we ask you a question? Because of course you, can. you just mentioned about you going to university. Yeah. Can you talk to us a little bit about what you studied and yeah, your yeah. experiences um, at university and stuff? Yeah, so like I said, I, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, or, um, but I, kinda, I knew I wanted to go to university. And my big sister had gone before me, and it just, it always seemed like a, an exciting, great place. And like you, I enjoyed school, but you always had the impression the university would be different. University is bigger, and there's more independence, and there's more opportunities, and there's more choices, and I really was excited about that. Um, and then I looked at kind of all the things I could study and what I might want to do. And I chose to do law in the end. And, and partly because it, it really, I didn't know if I wanted to be a lawyer for definite, uh, but it really, it really kind of fitted in with some of the values I had. And, and just, you know, now I look back and go, that's why it worked. At the time I wasn't going, these are my values, therefore. It just it, it instinctively felt something that I cared about, yeah. something I was passionate about. And I watched a lot of television and I watched some really great legal dramas and that sent looked very exciting and glamorous, so I thought I'd do that. Um, but I didn't, I was sporty before I went, but I didn't really, I wasn't sort of focusing on any particular sport to do at university and the best thing I got told then was kind of you will have all these great things you've never heard of. You, you, know, you can join societies and clubs and meet people that you won't have any experience or knowledge of. And the best thing is to be really open-minded and, and to try stuff and say yes to things and, and not start thinking, will I be good at that? Will I like it? But just try it and see. So even the first few weeks, you know, you've got the, the sort of freshers week and that fair and you've got all the societies you can join. And I remember, <laughs> I remember joining far more than I could ever go to. <laughs> Um, just because all these things seem so interesting and really, they really are like, oh, this is really stimulating and exciting. I don't know this. And one of the things I did um, was the rowing club when I started. And, uh, and again, that was just a bit of sport and a bit of fun and the thing to do alongside my degree. Yeah. And Were you physical. able to balance that quite well, like your studies with your sort of athletic career? Was that? It always was a sort of challenge to balance it. But I really, I found things that I was very passionate about. And I think that's the key. If you find things you really care about and you really want to make time for, then you find, yeah, find a way. Work. How have you found the transition from retiring from rowing into now being the chair for UK sport? I know, I've got a real job. <laughs> I've got an actual job. <laughs> Took me a long time. Um, yeah, so I left university, started rowing for the national team. It's part of you know, Team GB for 20 years, which is a lot longer than I planned, a lot longer than I would have expected. But I adored it, and I was very lucky to find something I genuinely loved. Gen what a privilege, what, what an absolutely amazing opportunity. And then I thought, well, how do I replace that? Yeah, Where do I go next? You know, a bit like you're saying about leaving Brooks, you, you've got this amazing community you're part of. What, what can I top that? Yeah, how on earth do you feel yeah. that? <laughs> and, I, I, and I think generally the most amazing thing is you, it, you will never replace it in the same way, um, but actually you're you will actually find other things that will be, you'll be equally passionate about and you'll be challenged in a different way. And that's, you know, life's this amazing, you know, these different stages yeah. and you're a different person, a different age and a different ability as you go through it. So I think the great thing is li life is just varied and, it, and that's what I want. I've always wanted a variety and I've got that in spades. Yeah. But I got it partly because of my family, my education and my friendships and it built up and you will all have that ahead of you. Okay. So, and that's not just for you today, yeah. but everyone who's watching, all these applicants who might be considering about Oxford Brooks, Thank you for paying attention. Thank you for spending time with us. And if you're interested at all, listen to these guys. It's an incredible opportunity. So come down and have a go. And if you can't make it in February, we've got another date on 6th of April, the next applicant day. Hope to see you then.